Hey there and welcome to another Tower of Fantasy New Player Starter Guide. In this video we are going to cover all of the places where you can gather resources for your limited banner pools. Before we start let's have a recap on how the Gacha Pity system works in this game. We are always guaranteed an SSR weapon on our 80th pool but the chance of it being the limited character is 50 to 50. The only way to get a guaranteed copy of the weapon is to buy it on the shop with 120 flame gold. You can get this currency by simply pulling on the banner. One red nucleus pull is equal to one flame gold. If you get a copy of an SR weapon that's already maxed on advancement you will get an extra one flame gold. SSR weapons on the other hand gives you 10 flame gold. Simply put. If your SR weapons are already maxed out then you're going to need approximately 110 pulls for a guaranteed copy. I highly suggest that you prioritize advancing your SR weapons first before pulling on limited banners so that you can save on pulls. For Matries is the only thing that's different is the pity being on the 40th pull and that it has its own type of currency on shop. A single piece will cost 80 red chips but unlike on weapons there's no extra chips that you can get from copies. There's also this Matri selector box that you can buy with 50 flame gold but you must have the weapon in order to buy it. Now without further ado, let's get started. The most commonly known thing to do in order to get resources for pools is world exploration. Getting your exploration progress up to a certain percentage will give you different kind of rewards. Included in these are dark crystals, red nucleus and special vouchers. For Asperia it's only Dark Crystals, but from Artificial Island up to the latest map which is Domain 9, you can also get the other two. There are times where you can directly get them from the overworld as well. Opening supply pods on Asperia and Artificial Island gives you Dark Crystals, while on other maps like Vera, Miroria, Confounding Abyss and Inners, you can find Red Nucleuses on different places. Next, we have the minigame events where we farm event currency points in exchange for lots of goods. It's a bit grindy to do and eventually becomes a chore, but there are some events where you can enjoy it with friends. We also get web events like these from time to time and then there's supply runs where you just have to log in and claim some stuff. Under sign in on the rewards tab, you can see that there's a claimable dark crystal on the fifth day. You can also get dark crystals by following or joining the game's socials. And here is where we type in the codes that we get from live streams or content creators. Needless to say we have the level pack rewards that we can get when we level up by 5. Moving on, let's go to Bygone. There are two modes here, Bygone and Sequential Phantasm. You can get dark crystals from both of them. Depending on how well you do on the rankings you can also get extra rewards weekly. Next, let's check out PvP. There are two modes in here as well, the 1v1 and the 8 vs 8. There are ranks here of course and the higher you climb, the higher your rewards. If you reach the highest rank on any of the two modes, you will be rewarded 500 dark crystal and a unique vehicle by the end of the month. Aside from that, we also have a battle royal game mode with lots of contenders. Most of them are bots though. Same thing applies in here, there are rankings and if you reach the highest rank you will receive 500 dark crystals by the end of the month. Another monthly content where you can get 200 dark crystals is Void Abyss Stage 6. This one is an end game content and is a pretty challenging mode. We can get a decent amount of dark crystals by upgrading our vehicles as well. If you go over achievements on the terminal you can see that some achievements gives them too. Now this next one might come as a surprise, but you can actually get a few dark crystals by cooking as well. If you happen to discover a new recipe it gets added on the cookbook and you will be rewarded. You can look up all of the recipes online. 
In this clip I'll be cooking tomato and fried egg pasta. There is a success rate percentage when you cook and the more ingredients you use, the better your chance of not failing. There's a total limit usage of 15 ingredients, so what I do is I double or triple the required ingredients until the success rate is 100%. The amount of dark crystals that you will get depends on the rarity of the food discovered. Good luck on becoming a master chef. Next on the list is weekly crew reward. If you are on a crew, you can get up to 150 dark crystals weekly. There's also this crew reward box where you can randomly get 100 to 500 dark crystals. It gives 5,000 gold most of the time though. Of course let's not forget about weekly activity points, where we can get up to 350 dark crystals if we reach 900 points. By doing the weeklies you can also gain progress on your battle pass. You can get a little bit of dark crystal here even if you don't buy the advanced BP. But if you do buy it, you're going to get lots of good stuff. If you plan on spending a little, the battle pass and monthly pass are the ones that are going to be worth your money. The monthly pass gives you 3000 dark crystals in the span of 30 days and 300 taniums upon purchase. You can exchange your taniums for some goods on the limited gift pack tab and if you're a low spender, you need to be very wise on spending them because some of these deals are scam and we do get very great deals from time to time. So watch out for those. By the way, you can get 50 Vera coins daily from the pass. Speaking of Vera coins we can also get pull resources from gachapans. I've mentioned this on part 2 of my guides but here's the gachapans that I highly recommend for new players to clear first. You can get materials to craft an underwater vehicle on these two gachapans. Well, you'd be able to get a vehicle for free by doing underwater exploration but having one from the get-go won't hurt. Trust me, it's going to make your life easier. For Mira coins it's going to be these two machines. What we're after are the matrices on the second machine but since there's red nucleuses as well, this is an absolute win. Now, where can you farm Mira coins aside from exploration and side quests? Miroria fun zones look like this and there are 8 of them in Miroria. Scoring perfectly on the minigame will give you 20 Mira coins, so if you do them all you'll get 160 Mira coins per day. We also have weekly Miroria commissions that you can take on the MSEC building. Go inside and talk to the lady at the front desk. There will be three missions available and each one will give 100 Mira and 50 Vera coins upon completion. Some of them are basic chores while others might take a couple minutes. Apart from those two we also have the monthly Mira reward from Miroria Racing. You must do a group race with three other people and your lap time will be given a ranking. At the end of the month players who are within the top 100 will be given Mira depending on their placements. The only requirement for participating is to have a car. The cheapest one will cost you 500 Mira coins. Finally let's take a look at the extra features. First one will be the exchange store on our home artificial island. In here we can buy a total of 4 special voucher every month. There are also other stuff in here like relic shard boxes, weapon augment boxes, gold and even a brand new vehicle. Next one is another feature on the home artificial island which is the mysterious vendor. 
this old man randomly appears on your island from noon up to midnight and sells random stuff. Most of the time he sells good stuff so if you see this logo go ahead and look for him on the island. If you want to make it snappy, you can invite other players to help you search for him because they can make purchases from your vendor too. Also, rest assured because other players can't take red nucleus or special vouchers if the old man is selling it. The system also makes it so that you are guaranteed one of each item he's selling. Last but not least, we have Claire's Dream Machine. This device randomly drops when you kill elite mobs on Asperia, Artificial Island, Vera, or Confounding Abyss. Interact with it and it will take you inside an instance where you do random things. If you finish the challenge properly then you will get different kinds of rewards. If you're below level 80 there will be a limit of 7 dream machines per week with mediocre rewards, but once you reach level 80, the limit will lower to 3 dream machine per week, but the rewards will be revamped. Once in a blue moon you will get red nucleus or special vouchers. I also have a guide for this one so check it out if you're interested.